Welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today we're going to harvest and preserve our cilantro. Look at this cilantro. These plants are healthy and doing great. But we need to harvest. The reason we need to harvest cilantro is it does not tolerate hot weather. And as soon as it warms up, th these guys actually lived through our epic freeze. But as soon as it starts to warm up, that's the cue for this cilantro to bolt. Bolting simply means it grows a stalk, puts on flowers, and goes to seed. And when it does that, the, the leaves don't taste very good anymore. Um, what we're going to do is harvest all these great good leaves down here. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to preserve cilantro. Because you know, if, if you buy cilantro, you know that it goes bad in like three days. Sitting in your fridge, leaves start to turn black, that's no good. We want to extend cilantro to at least last us four, three, four weeks, right? It's still not going to last forever. You can freeze it and it will last almost indefinitely in your freezer. Uh, but then you, you, lose, you lose some of the color. If you're looking for aesthetics, if you're looking for a garnish, um, yeah, it, it's not quite that nice. But I'll talk about several different ways that you can preserve this, and we're going to go into the kitchen and I'll show you. But first, I got to harvest it. So I want to try to leave maybe some of these tall stalks behind and just take off all these good leaves that we need. Because if those go to seed, cilantro becomes, the seeds become coriander and maybe we can get some of that. Won't be much, just two little plants here. Let's start harvesting. I'm just gonna come in here and start snipping stalks, dropping them down in my big dish. I'm gonna use that big dish to wash some of the cilantro. Now, if you grow your own cilantro, then you know what you've put on your plants or if you've put anything on at all. What I would suggest if you're going to freeze it is don't wash it. That seems counterproductive. But what, what causes this stuff to go bad is moisture. If you're going to store it in the fridge, and one of the methods I'm going to show you, don't wash it. Wash it when you use it and not when you store it. Wow, that smells so good. I'm going to leave some of this foliage on here so that we can try to grow some coriander seed. And I'm going to avoid, <clears throat> let me show you what to avoid, these wispy leaves that almost, they start to look like they're frilly. We don't need that. <clears throat> and up here, these wispy leaves, they almost start to look like carrot leaves. Those are not going to taste good. What you want are these flat, big, broad leaves like that. So, let me just get down in here and start chopping. We'll sort things out later. Inevitably, we're going to carry in some hitchhikers, some bugs. So be careful to go through this very uh, diligently as you're processing. And what you want to look for when you're processing is to get rid of the yellow leaves like that and any damaged leaves. Make sure you get rid of snails and bugs and carriers or uh, hangers on. I'm not seeing any here. This is a real healthy plant. This is probably the best cilantro I've ever grown. I'm not sure if you can see it on this one, but there are the flower blossoms forming. So we want to harvest now before this thing changes its flavor profile and gets a little bitter. Get in here and take off these broad leaves. I'm going to leave this plant alone. We've taken plenty from that one. I like to use the stems as well. There's nothing wrong with the stems. A lot of flavor in there. All right, I think we've got a good batch. Okay, we're in the kitchen, ready to go. I wanna show you first the way to preserve this for three weeks, maybe four weeks, a whole month in the refrigerator so that uh, you know it doesn't, it doesn't go bad. The enemy of cilantro, if you're trying to keep it fresh like this, it's moisture. And it's beyond me at the grocery store why they have those misters that, that uh, shower down on the produce to uh, keep it kind of cool. But it, it makes it wet. And you bring your cilantro home, it's all wet. You put it in the fridge, and it rots. You know, the little uh, 
uh, vegetable drawers, the produce drawers, the crisper down at the bottom. We call that the rotter in our fridge because when we put cilantro in there, it's good for a few days. At the max, you might get a week out of it. And you see when that happens, when that rot starts happening, these leaves start to turn black, dark green and black. And the more of that stuff that's in your cilantro bunch, the, the, the faster it's going to rot. So what we're going to do is take it right from the garden and we're not going to wash it. We're going to leave it dry. And what I'll do, wrap it in a paper towel and tightly wrap it in a paper towel and put it in a Ziploc bag, get all the air out of it. And that will store in your fridge much better than wet cilantro. So get me a nice long piece of paper towel. And what we're going to do is examine our cilantro as we go to make sure we don't have any bugs and snails and we throw out any yellow leaves. And we're just going to get us a little pile right here and roll it up into a little cilantro burrito. I keep the stems. There's a lot of flavor in those stems. All right. We're just going to kind of tightly roll this up. Probably don't need all that. Like so. And that goes into the refrigerator. After we get all the air out of it, I'm going to kind of roll that air out of it. And zip it up. I'm going to write the date on here and this will keep in the fridge like I said, good long while. Now with that dry storage method, you want to remember when you take it out to wash it because we haven't washed it yet. But this one, the rest of this, I'm going to go ahead and wash and I'm going to put some vinegar in here just to kill off any bugs that might be crawling around in there. And we'll let this soak for about 15 minutes. Just a little bit of vinegar, the cheap stuff. You don't need much. And we'll just kind of swoosh it around, get any of the dirt that's in there. When you grow this yourself, there's no chemicals and uh, there's no, uh, there's no chemicals unless you put chemicals on, but I know I, I didn't put any chemicals on here. The only thing that's going to be on here is dirt and bugs. The stuff you get at the store, you want to make sure that you do this step. You never know who's touched that. You know, they just put it out and uh, leave it unprotected from whoever comes by. You never know where their hands have been. Yeah, that's gross. All right, we'll let this soak for a little bit. All right, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. That's all you need. We're gonna put it in our colander here and let it dry out a little bit. And then we're gonna move on to other storage options. If you had a salad shooter or a salad spinner, that would be ideal. <clears throat> but what we're going to do with this doesn't require absolutely dry herbs. Incidentally, you can, you can preserve any tender herbs, basil, parsley, even dill with these methods. I froze dill straight up took it dry and just put it in the freezer and it's retaining its color pretty well let me show you the dill has retained its dark green color it's going to be well it'll hold its shape but it's not crispy anymore once you thaw it out because freezing bursts the cell walls of the plant and you end up with mushy plants so you know you wouldn't use this as a garnish or anything but you certainly could cook with it that's, that's one way straight, straight up freezing all right, I'm just going to kind of loosely pat this dry. All right, I'm going to move it off this way. What we're going to do is chop some up, put it in ice cube trays, freeze it. You can use uh, water to uh, kind of form an ice cube. You can use oil. We're going to chop some up and I haven't decided water, oil. I am going to show you another way that does use oil though. Like I said, I like the stems, and when you chop it up, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter if the stems are left in there. We're just going to give this a pretty fine chop.
if you get some particularly large stems, they can be fibrous and you want to take those out. That'll go to compost. Now, chopped up like this, we can take a spoon or your fingers and just put it in the ice cube tray like so. Try to get about the same amount per little cell here. You could even measure it out, say one teaspoon per cell. And then you'd know when you're cooking that your cilantro is pre-measured. I'm just going to fill up a few of these cells for demonstration purpose because I'm not going to chop up all my parsley this way. I mean uh, cilantro this way. I'm going to show you another way. Okay, once you have your cubes filled, you want to add a little bit of water to this and then we'll put it in the freezer. I'm making a mess. Trying to be all fancy here. We want to fill it up until the, until the uh, cilantro just begins to rise. Because what, what the idea is, is you want to bind it all together in an ice cube, but you don't want it so watery that when you use it, you're, uh, you're diluting the flavor too much. You want it to stick together as a cube. And what we'll do is freeze this, and when it's frozen, then we can pull it out of the fridge pop them out of this tray and put them in a bag and store them. Okay, our next method involves oil. We're going to make a cilantro puree preserved in olive oil with some garlic. So crush your garlic and peel it. You don't have to chop it up because the food processor will take care of that for you. Here's what we're going to do. We put our garlic in and we're just going to kind of tear this up and stuff it down in there. I'm going to do small batches here and then we'll mix it all together. I don't want to go out and try to dig up my other food processor. You could do this in a blender if you've got a particularly powerful blender. Perfectly okay. Again, as you're going through this, take the time to examine your, your leaves and look for any that are yellow. Get them out of there. Right, let's see what, the, what this does. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in there. And we're going to pulse. Let's see. There we go. Now some folks prefer a chunky kind of a pesto-like consistency. If that's you, just watch it and make sure that you uh, make sure that you get it where you want it. Scrape it down a bit. Ooh, that smells good. I like this to be pretty thin, more like a sauce almost. And you can pour it over your food. Not, not just Mexican food, but scrambled eggs. It, well, anything. You could put it on bread. All right, let's put some more in. A little bit more oil. This is an eyeball kind of thing. We're eyeballing it here. We're not, there's not really a recipe. The smell in here is awesome. that's going to need more oil. Now what we want to add to this is some salt, a little bit of salt. You can put anything in here you want. A little salt. You can put some cayenne pepper in there. Let's do that. This is cayenne pepper that I've grown myself and dried, ground up. We'll put a little bit of that in there. give it a little kick. When you get it to the consistency you like, put it in a jar, or you could put this in ice cube trays and freeze them too. Obviously you won't be using this particular preserved cilantro 
for fresh eating but you put it in soups you can put it in dishes just throw a cube or two in there or like we're doing here just make a sauce out of it let's put this in a jar we'll grind the rest of this up and puree it as well then we'll need to mix them together really well because this has all the spices and the garlic in it our next batch will be plain we'll need to blend them together look at that I just had a taste of it it's super super good very garlicky but we're gonna remember we're gonna add another batch to it which will mellow it out a bit it's got that cayenne zip yeah this is good stuff this will keep in your fridge for up to a month maybe even more if you know anything about the history of preservation in the old days it was common to preserve food well I'll be come on now it was common to preserve food with butter you could put eggs anything perishable in a crock and then put a layer of butter on the top and pioneers would keep eggs fresh for quite some time all right let's put the rest of this in there get it ground up now we're going to combine our two batches and mix it up and we'll well let's not get that leaf in there we'll be good all right well we've created a oil preserved cilantro paste almost treat it like a sauce i'm going to mix this up get all those flavors incorporated together the first batch had the spices the second batch was just to bulk it up now's the time if you see any stems in there that you want to take out take them out this will keep in the fridge for up to a month and here's a here's a hint try to get everything down off the sides if you want it to last longer and pour you just a little bit of layer of olive oil on top and that will keep the air from getting to the vegetable after all that's what that's what oil does it keeps oxidation from happening as quickly because it deprives the organic material of air can you see how beautiful that is little red flecks in there of cayenne pepper that layer of oil on top yeah now I need to find an excuse to eat it fish tacos alright folks we went from this to this in about 30 minutes fresh cilantro can't beat it and this way of preserving is actually my favorite way it's technically not preserving the cilantro we actually made a little sauce it's got some garlic and some spice some salt and pepper in there but oh it's so good it's a great way to extend enjoying this little tender herb that's about to be useless to me unless it puts on some seeds so if you'd like to follow along our spring garden find out what else we're harvesting and cooking find out what we're growing and learn how to grow a backyard garden please subscribe to our channel we uh we got a lot of stuff coming up for you because spring is here in earnest happy gardening to you talk to you next time bye bye